Welcome to my talk today about data and artificial intelligence strategy, a conceptual enterprise big data cloud architecture to enable market-oriented organization. My name is Caio Moreno, and I am a PhD student at Complutense University of Madrid. This talk is for the International Conference on Automation and Artificial Intelligence here in London, United Kingdom. This is my LinkedIn. Please reach out to me if you have questions. The agenda for today, we're going to talk about the authors, the university, the paper abstract, the definition of a conceptual framework for market oriented organizations based on AI and cloud architecture. And we're going to talk about something new that probably you never heard before, and it's called data supermarket. And we're going to talk about how you can use data supermarket as a key component of your architecture, your AI architecture and your data and architecture and how the data supermarket is very important for your data product life cycle. We're going to then conclude and discuss about future work. I hope you guys like it. So quick introduction about us. So Professor Ramon and Professor Enrique, they are very well known professors in Spain in the world. And I am a PhD student. Um, so I'm uh, just starting my career as a researcher. And I'm very glad that I was able to work with those two professors. They're very important and especially for this paper and for the work we've done together. And recently I started working for Microsoft London UK as a senior cloud solution architect and data science. Before, I was a professor in the UNOS University in Brazil and also in AOE, Escuela de Organización Industrial in Madrid. I was also a speaker in many international events in Brazil, in Europe, in Africa, and US. I'm fluently English, Spanish, and Portuguese. I am married, I have two daughters. My wife is expecting the third daughter. I live here in London. And currently, I'm doing my part-time PhD at Complutense University of Madrid. I did my data mining uh, master degrees in the Complutense in the same university. Then I continue my PhD. I also did some uh, data science specialization uh, in Madrid uh, for the UTAD. And then I did an MBA and and Getulio Vargas University in São Paulo, a specialization uh, software development specialization in the uh, Federal University of, of, sorry, it's hard to say in, in English. So it's E2 FPR, UTFPR in Paraná. So it's the tech, the Federal University of Technology of Paraná. And my main fields of research is data science, big data, IoT, cloud, and automatic machine learning or auto ML as people talk. And I've tried to focus on marketing and then financial sector. So Complutense University of Madrid is a very well-known university in Madrid and in the world. It's a public research university located in Madrid. It's, it's one of the oldest universities in the world. And I'm very proud to be a student of this university. I really love Complutense University of Madrid. Thank you, university, for accepting me and for all the support I received during my uh, research for this paper. So this paper was published in June 2019. Uh, three authors, myself, Ramon and Enrique. And uh, the paper link you can find here. And this is how you can sit us if you think it's relevant for you, your work. I hope you like it. So let me talk about the paper abstract. So market oriented companies, uh, when you think about a market oriented companies, you, you need to think that a company that wants to be very focused on the market, they really need to rely on data. So market oriented companies, they are very committed with analytics, very committed to understand the needs of their customers. They are very committed to collect data, analyze data, process data, store data. And they want to do this in a very systematic and anticipatory manner. 
So most of the market oriented companies in the last years, they define that their main strategic objective for the next year was to become a truly data driven organization in the context of big data. So companies invest many, many uh, years of research and a lot of money to become a data driven company. But then big data arrives and then it, it, it brought new complexity to the game. So companies now, they need to adapt to this big data context. And now companies are adapting also to the artificial intelligence uh, era that we are living now. If you're not building an artificial intelligence strategy, you are in a big risk of becoming out of the game very, very soon. So many companies, they are building what they call, what we call as well, an enterprise data platform. So a global platform to handle data for the whole company. But when you think about a global company, you can imagine how complex it's just to build an enterprise data platform for the whole company. So we, I, I had the privilege to work with companies like in 200 markets, like 200 countries, and companies that just to, to build this enterprise data platform, it is not an easy task. So this work that we've done is to help companies. So we are proposing uh, artificial intelligence cloud architecture on how you can move from descriptive to prescriptive and leverage cloud service. They are available in many cloud providers, the public cloud like Google, uh, Amazon, and of course, Microsoft, the company that I work for, uh, and they will give you the ability to deliver much more value in a, in a shorter time compared to traditional approach. So when you think about a formal process of strategic planning, you have sp to specify the objectives, you have to generate strategies, and you have to evaluate strategy and you have to monitor. So most of the modern organizations, they have invested for many years in the conceptual framework similar to the one proposed by Stone and Woodcock, and they explain uh, how you should do that. So you can see that in the past, people have like the data, the data house, the inside generation. So, and then you have actions and you have outcome. But because of big data and because of artificial intelligence and because of cloud and because of all those changes that they're happening now, we need to adapt this architecture. So we as authors, we are proposing what we call a data and AI supermarket architecture. So our proposal and this new framework, this new form of framework that we are proposing is to help you to adapt to a big data market oriented strategy. So we are adding components to this architecture. So in the first layer where we have data, we're saying you should look for data like IoT sensors. If you're not using sensors, you might be losing the opportunity to improve your business. So think about IoT data. Then we are proposing that you should move to the cloud. You should move to a cloud data lake, not just a data house. You need a cloud data lake. You need a cloud data house. And you need what we call a data supermarket. So the data supermarket is something new. It's something that we come up with the concept, with the idea, and we are proposing that you need a part of your cloud data lake and your cloud data house, a specific area where you're going to handle your data products, where you're going to have a much higher level of security and you're going to be much more focused on delivering value with this data supermarket. And potentially you're going to be able to sell data products internally and externally. Of course, there's a lot of risk because when you think about building data products, it's a lot of experiments, so you don't know if your data product is actually going to be shipped. So there's a lot of research and develop R&D, but some data products, they can become very successful as some examples that we're going to show uh, quick. And some data products, they can uh, really change the way your company is working now. And you can even create a new company just to sell your name 
new data product. Maybe uh, your your company have no space to use this new data product and you're going to be able to build a new company, maybe uh, a joint venture with another company or just like a, a company to sell this data product. And this architecture is to help you uh, to understand the important components that you need. So then after data supermarket, we are proposing that we need to use deep learning. That's something there is. This is nothing new. But most of companies, they most of the companies they are already using. So you can use deep learning for object detection. You can use for uh, text analytics. So there are many many areas in the machine learning space that you can use deep learning to improve the accuracy of your machine learning models. And you can use AutoML to be able to allow much more people in your organization to build machine learning models with much more accuracy and much less and, and, and much quicker. And you can use cloud AI. And this is something that is very, very interesting that we are proposing that you should leverage as much as possible service like, for example, Microsoft Cognitive Service, where you can use the object detection APIs, the speech APIs, the text APIs. They are all state of art and they are there available for you to use. Instead of uh, building things from scratch, you can just leverage those service, those cloud AI service, and you're going to make uh, uh, data products much more quick, quicker. You also could think about using chatbox. You can have uh, a strategy that some people will contact you by chatbox, and then you can have the chatbox to do a triage using machine learning, and you can say if this is something that I want uh, a human to continue the call or the interaction, then I will send this to a human. So chatbox, they are being heavily used by companies. And I'll give you an example. Many, many organizations now in the world, they're using chatbox for uh, coronavirus. So uh, this whole pandemic that is happening in the world, people are using chatbox to, to help with the number of people seeking for help. And you can use chatbox for many many other use case. You can have real-time alerts. You can use DevOps. DevOps something that most companies are already using, but maybe this is not part of your architecture and you should use it. Uh, and we uh, believe that you should have an end-to-end data science lifecycle using machine learn ops and machine learning model management. So those are the companies that we add to this architecture and you're going to have data, the data management solution for analytics, the insight generation, the actions and the outcomes. And your big data architecture with governments, your data science team to build your data products and uh, use your data supermarket to uh, sell your products, even for a mon monetary value internally, externally, will give you a lot of competitive. And then you can use these new products to take actions and to achieve business outcomes. So the data supermarket definition uh, defined by the authors uh, is a place to commercialize the data products generated by the insight generation process to other consumers, exchanging them for a monitor value. So a data supermarket is a data lake with data privacy and data science. The data supermarket key component uh, so sorry, the data supermarket is a key component and the company of the future will build and sell data products. And we can see this happening all the time with the truly data driven companies and with the, the new companies that are already uh, starting using cloud and using machine learning and data science and building data products. And we are just saying you should also use the data supermarket <clears throat> as a key company to enable data-driven organizations to build data products and monetize their data. Sorry. <clears throat> so yeah, this is the life cycle, the data science life cycle. So you have data coming from client, from external, from many sources. You put this into your DMSA, you have the insert generation, and then you put this into your data supermarket where you host your data products and you sell this to the data consumers. And this is your data science life cycle to build data products and sell in the data supermarket. Sorry for the quality of the image. 
So the data product life cycle, just an example, you can have a product that is to predict churn. This is the goal. And you can have um, input coming from different sources, sources one, source two, source three, many different structure, unstructured, same structure, all different types of data. And then you have your intelligence, your data product intelligence. This is where you're going to uh, build all this intelligence to deliver the data product desired outcomes. And then you have the outcome and the data product outcome could be a, a model to predict churn and you host this in your data supermarket and you can share this and you can sell that you can even ask for a monetary value and you can distribute this internally and externally so there are a lot of benefits when you think about data pro data products so some data products they can create for you new revenue uh, streams you can even build a new company that will give you new money uh, I'm going to talk about an example about Telefonica about that we, you can have better products and servers for your own company you can have operation efficiency increase your profit increase and you can even have a profit optimization so there are many ways you can use data products to have uh, significant benefits for you and your company so real life example of a data product it's a product, a, pro a data product called SmartStep from Telefonica. And it's a very successful example of building data products and providing them to external companies. So Telefonica builds SmartStep and it's an inside solution that uses anonymized and aggregate mobile network data to provide useful insight. And I just want to focus on the anonymized and aggregated because that's a very important thing for your data supermarket in your data supermarket usually you're gonna store anonymize and aggregate data because when you want to sell your product you need to think about uh, things like gdpr and all those uh, important data privacy issues that you should consider also you need to think that how you're gonna securely uh, store this data your data supermarket is much more secure or at least should be much more secured than your even your data lake and your data house. So you're going to have very important products in your data supermarket and you need to make sure you have all the data privacy uh, implemented in your data supermarket. And there are many ways you can build that. So if you want to see the paper, you can just click on the link here. We're not going to have time to go to the paper, uh, but please feel free to read the paper. There's much more detail than this short presentation. I'm just concerned about time and uh, because of time, we're going to have to finish now. But please reach out to me if you have questions about what we discuss. And in terms of future work, we're going to evolve the data in our supermarket architecture. We're going to improve the data privacy and also promote ways to integrate the data supermarket layer into the existing modern data platform architecture that many companies already invest. There are many companies, they already have a data lake and data house. Not all of them, they are using the cloud, but they already have this modern data platform. So. Uh, even if you don't want to run on the cloud, you can even still keep a data supermarket on your own premise. But we we definitely recommend you to have your data supermarket and your data and AI uh, supermarket architecture uh, running on the cloud. It will give you much more benefit. So I just want to finish now. I'm still on time. And this is my LinkedIn. Uh, Please reach out to me if you have questions. I'm very happy to respond. And then thank you so much for your time today. I hope you enjoy.